On June 25, 2021, the Pacific Island nation of Nauru triggered a rule that would allow deep sea mining to begin in two years, regardless of whether regulations have been put in place. These mining companies are gearing up to put huge machines on the seabed floor and rip up the seabed floor. The stakes are so high. When you've ruined the ocean, you've ruined life on Earth, effectively. What was your reaction when you first heard about deep sea mining? Here we go again. We've already pushed the ocean to the absolute brink through overexploitation. We're now going to feed in an industrial activity under the water. And it may just be the thing that pushes the ocean over. It may be the straw that breaks the camel's back. The deep sea is the lowest layer of the ocean. Below 1,800 meters, temperatures are cold, pressure is high, and life operates on longer time scales. Almost every time we go in the deep ocean, we find new species. There's been scientific evidence that some deep sea sponges can live for up to 11,000 years. Deep sea corals, three, 4,000 years. So the ability of some of these organisms to recover their populations after they've been damaged are uh, very limited. Companies are interested in mining the seafloor for polymetallic nodules, rock-like formations that contain metals like nickel, copper, cobalt, and manganese. Polymetallic nodules form around fragments of debris on the seafloor. Things like shark teeth. Over millions of years, metals from the seawater amalgamate around these fragments. When nodules are cut in half, you can see growth rings, like those on a tree. The role they play in the ocean's geochemistry and carbon cycle is only beginning to be understood. There have been some research papers that have looked at whether there's an exchange of minerals between these polymetallic nodules and ocean water that actually moderate the chemical balance of the ocean in general. And that would affect its pH, its nutrient contents, and its livability for all the other creatures. What can we expect deep sea mining to look like? So there's going to be a ship at the sea surface. That ship is going to lower a machine down onto the seabed. These are huge machines with traction wheels that are going to move along the seabed and hoover up these nodules. They're going to crush these nodules and send the crushed material through a riser up to the ship on the surface. They're going to be left with a lot of sediment that went up with the nodules, and they're going to pipe that back down again through another pipe. And they're being very cagey about where exactly they're going to release this. So we don't actually know. But in all likelihood, it's going to be in what they call the midwater zone, which is, from what we understand now, the most biodiverse part of the ocean. It's the area where all the economic fisheries take place, where food security for coastal communities takes place, where all the dolphins are and all the tuna fish are and the whales are. When that sediment comes out of that pipe in that midwater zone, it's going to disperse. It's going to create plumes. This mining is going to be going on 24-7. So there's be a continuous, non-stop plume of sediment particles being released into this midwater zone for up to, say, 30 years per mining operation. And there are multiple of these mining operations being envisioned. These little particles are really destructive to a lot of marine species. They get into their gills, get into basically what is their way of breathing. So the impact is not just going to be at the seabed, it's also going to be in this midwater zone. But even at the seabed, when these machines start moving along the seabed, they're going to kick up a whole bunch of sediment. There's huge plumes that develop around these huge machines. And this is not just going to be in the actual area that's been permitted for mining. These plumes get suspended into the water column and there are currents in the water column which will take these plumes, they're thinking up to 100 kilometers out. So there will be a, a really large impact zone around the actual mining zone because of these sediment plumes, which are considered deadly to marine species. Because the materials they want to mine can be used in electric car batteries, deep sea mining companies have portrayed themselves as eco-warriors. 
but disturbing the seabed could be catastrophic for the climate. The deep sea is the largest active carbon sink on Earth. Stirring up sediment will release carbon back into the environment. It could damage the ability of the deep sea to sequester carbon and make the water more acidic. Although many people haven't heard about deep sea mining, Pacific Islanders have been fighting it for over a decade. Activists in Papua New Guinea fiercely opposed Nautilus, and the company eventually went bankrupt. But the threat of deep sea mining still looms over many Pacific communities. My name is Selena Titakara. I am the campaign uh, for deep sea mining national coordinator in Tonga. We have been working on the position of asking the government to support a moratorium on deep sea mining. And we have started this work since 2012. In November last year, we did a national um, consultation across the five islands. And we have an unanimous vote of 100% to ban deep sea mining in Tonga, in the region, Pacific region, and in the world. So that is our new position as of last year. Tonga, they have just over 100,000 people. Over 90% of them depends on the sea. Our whole identity is built around the ocean and the interconnectivity that we have, our folklores, our traditions. We were put on earth as not as a dominant figure that we can dictate to others. We are cohabitors of this earth. And whatever we do to the ocean, it will return to us twofold. We will lose uh, our livelihood. The fish will go and the whales will disappear because of the noise and the uh, muddy waters. I saw a speaker that is very pro DSM. She said, who are we to stop people from having what they want? If they want electric cars, you know, we need to give it to them. Well, I'm saying straight to that person, I don't think so. Who am I? I am the resource owner that these corporates wanted to dig up. And as long as I have life, I will fight not to have the deep sea mining happen. I can actually ask her, who are you? To actually say that we have to deliver to these people. We need the air, we need the ocean, we don't need the car. The ocean has sustained generations of Pacific peoples. Mining it would be like mining one zone, breaking up one zone. Deep sea mining has not been consulted it's not wanted in the Pacific, and we're calling for a global ban. If all the projects that are being proposed in the Clarion Clipperton zone go ahead, that will actually be the largest contiguous mining area on Earth. The cumulative impacts of many mines is a, a huge concern. There's migratory grounds, different species through this area. There'll be noise, there'll be light, there'll be the, the turbulence and the disturbance of the ocean floor. There are so many different elements that we have to be really concerned about. Our oceans are so under threat in so many ways. Why would we be wanting to create a whole new industry where we don't even really know how severe the impacts would be, but we do know they're gonna be severe and they're going to be long lasting. If there was ever a future problem that we can stop now, it's this. We don't need to deep sea mine. We shouldn't be doing it. Let's stop it before it happens. That would, be, that would be a genuine win for humanity. It would be a win on a par with saving the Amazon.